Former NFL tight end Kellen Winslow just pled guilty to two sexual assault charges. Now this, guys, I'm so tired of speaking about another egregious crime committed um, by an athlete. So when he was at the University of Miami in 2003, <coughs> um, he allegedly uh, you know, sexually assaulted a unconscious woman. She was 17, <coughs> he was 19. Um, and then in 2018, he also assaulted a 55-year-old uh, hitchhiker. Now. What? This was yeah. crazy. Yeah. So he was facing um, lifetime in prison if he did not plead guilty and it went uh, to trial. So with him pleading guilty, he's now facing 12 to 18 years. So he's, you know, facing uh, some hefty time, but not compared to, you know, life. What do you guys feel about this? It's crazy. Wait, 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 where did this happen? Like, what state was so this So the... San Diego. Right. The, right, the most recent charging. ones are out in California, San Diego. The 2003 was at the University of Miami when he was yeah. a um, the college Titan, athlete. Didn't he used to play with the Jets? Oh, he he played today. with the Jets okay. towards the end of his career. Yeah. Uh, he was originally drafted by the Browns. Browns he played with Tampa right. Bay. He played with yeah. the Jets. Um, he's kind of a legacy child. His dad is a <laughs> Football Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. Um, who no, played no, with I the know. Chargers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's yeah, it's sure. very a lot of layers to the story, though, because not only those two that we know about, there's a situation where he masturbated in front of a woman at a supermarket parking mm -hmm. lot. Um, Yo, what's wrong yeah, with Yeah, your man's out of control. So in total, there's control. five accusers. Right. And he pled guilty to two. Um, he's wilding right now in these streets. Like, this is not, only is he, not only is he wilding, he's I'm not, not in, to cut you he's off. He's in jail now, right? Well, yeah. he's, he's, he's awaiting sentencing. Yeah. He's looking at 12 to 18 years. But it was a unique trial, even watching it, because even when he was pleading guilty and the judge was like, are you sure? And you're under oath and, you know, we're asking you one more time. He was like, I mean, I guess so. It's, you know, I guess I have to. Like, his answers were really unsure to me. Yeah. So it was kind of weird because even his lawyers, I think, were kind of against it. Now, he said something when the judge was saying, like, do you understand the time that you're facing? And he's like, I just want to do 12 years um, and get back to my family. So I, I feel like he assumed that he was going to be found guilty if he went to trial and he was going to get lifetime. So yeah. part of me, I don't know if he did all of these things. I don't know if he's if he pled guilty because he was like, let me just take the minimal amount of 12 years and just get it over with. Because if I get life, I'm gone. So how, how is that like a life? How did that even the whole life? come to play like is well because once you go to trial based on the things. based yeah. on the Not laws there yeah yeah so to me the evidence is, right like, uh to me the intrigue in this story is his defense has been from day one that his lawyer's defense anyway because he hasn't publicly spoken about it aside yeah. from when he pleaded mm -hmm. is that they are attributing his behavior to brain trauma he yeah. had a really bad motorcycle accident his rookie year in the nfl and we know how prevalent CTE is within mm. the NFL. Yeah. The problem with that, though, is you cannot test for CTE on dead. a living person. Yeah. yeah. So there's no way of really telling. Mm -hmm. You can only go based off of behavioral, behavioral patterns. Yep. Yeah. And, that, and, and that, that's why I think the yeah. entry comes in on this. Yeah, that's a huge part that you mentioned. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, and that's why I kind of, because, you know, the past couple of weeks we've been, with the guests, we've kind of really been getting into uh, mental, mental illness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, big shout out to Coach D mm -hmm. um, and uh, Al Harrington, who, who came a couple of weeks ago, and we, we were breaking down the whole uh, mental illness situation with different players. You know, Al Harrington had mentioned, you know, there's a reason why Josh Gordon keeps going back to smoking marijuana. You know, so a lot of, especially in football, where you have a lot of these head-to-head -head hits, the you know, the concussions and all of that. So, and I'm, and I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I'm giving him an excuse because I don't, I don't know the situation. But we do have to look into the effect that a lot of these players are dealing with mental issues. Now, again, like you said, Eric, we can't test for C, uh, CTE right. right now, so we won't, we won't necessarily know until, you know, obviously, until he's deceased. But that is a factor that we have to look into when we, when we're talking about these cases. Right. I mean, we, we won't know. Um, is it an excuse they're using? I hope not, because yeah. obviously this is a, a very serious case. Mm -hmm. These are multiple women. Um, none of us up here know him well enough to know what his patterns were. And, mm -hmm. you know, did he just have moments where he just snapped and, and showed aggressive behavior or this is how he always was? Yeah. We don't know that. Well, the, the issue with it, though, too, is that some of these um, accusations were made before he even entered the league. So it's the like the first one, yes, yeah. correct. You know what I mean? So I don't to your point of like a pattern, but then even that is kind of. This is why I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not I like know or believe what really happened because in 2003, the woman that accused him, like even she said she really has no idea 
if anything happened, but she feels like it did. Correct. So even her, right, and it was she was unconscious, so she's, she's unconscious. She were, feels college like college kids partying. Uh -huh. She yeah. wakes up the next day, they're in the same dorm room. And her she, clothes have been changed, and mm -hmm. she uh, she had the strong assumption that something happened between them. But getting that assumption though is not enough to get. Yeah. No, nah, but listen, I'm not even going to touch on that because. As a woman, you would know better than we would. I've never been in that situation, sure. so I'm not going to assume now, to you know. You can definitely yeah. black out but and that, not remember. Yeah, because that's Absolutely. a discussion. That that's but I don't want to take light of it either and make it yeah, seem yeah, like, yeah. oh, because you don't remember, nothing happened. Well, yeah. I'm, and I'm not saying that. I'm just saying to try someone but to say some, for, over for assumption. To say, right. I, I was raped. Yeah, but well, she didn't know. She, she, she did not know what happened. Right. She, we're going under the assumption that because her clothes were altered, that something happened. Right. And they but they don't know. But they use that gonna... they use that incident though to kind of develop a pattern with him. Yeah. yeah. That's really why that instance was used. Because that story came up, I believe, right before the draft, mm -hmm. that they, there were those accusations about mm -hmm. him. But again, there was never enough evidence to say that's what happened or it didn't happen. No right. one ever knew. Right. And the thing is, you know, because and even you know, going back to the mental illness, because we don't know how far back, because you gotta think these guys play football from from Pee Wee. That's right. true. And I, you know, I filmed Pee Wee. I didn't seen you know yeah. a couple of times hit, some yeah. crazy uh, mm -hmm. injuries. You know, at, at at that age. So now imagine when you're talking about Pee Wee, the, the kids started thinking around seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about going from seven, eight years yeah, old hit. all the way to an adult. The amount of of, of physical hit. force Abuse. that is going at your your body, your your mental, your head, for all of those years, you know, it could have a toll. It take a toll on you. Absolutely, yeah. and we can't overlook. We, we view concussions and the physicality of football the way we do now yeah. because of all the research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're talking about a guy who was, again, playing Pop Warner in the 90s mm -hmm. when you were taught to just, yo, suck it up, let's go. Yeah. Oh, Get you just got play. your bell rung. Let's go. Go yeah. play. All right? Now the NFL has all the protocols in place to stop a guy from going back on the field. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of guys who have openly said, I probably had mo six, seven concussions before I even hit the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lord knows, I just thought I was a little dizzy. I just thought yeah, I was yeah. seeing stars Concussion. and didn't know they went right back on the field. Yep. So yeah. again, that's not to excuse his behavior. Yeah. But we don't we really won't know the type of trauma. Aaron Hernandez, who everyone knows for the murder, yeah. when they tested his brain after he died, Aaron Hernandez was about twenty eight when he hung himself. Yeah. He had the brain of a sixty year old man. That's how damaged his brain was at yeah. the time. Yeah. So we don't know, right? We don't know what mm -hmm. Kellen Winslow is really dealing with mentally, and we won't know until years from now when he's when he's gone. And to be honest, when I was watching the footage of him like pleading guilty, like just the daze in his eyes, he looked so removed from the courtroom that I wouldn't doubt. Like, is there something going on? Whether it's mental health, right, yeah. you know, mental health, or like you said, CTE, whatever it is. But it just I don't know him personally, but just watching it. He was just so mellow and so like, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm pleading guilty. I guess even, I'm doing this. And yeah. I'm watching it like, you right. guess, boy, even, you better do the, 12 years. Even the years. judge was taken back by the way he answered. And he said, are you sure? Right. He was like, I mean, yeah. this is what I have to do. And I'm like, no, like, this is crazy. This is your life. Right. So I, there's definitely something wrong there, 100%. There's, there's a lot more to the story that we're not going to know right away. Yeah. Um, yep. But there, there are multiple, aside from the women, obviously his life, we got to see how this plays out because there, there are multiple lives that are damaged behind this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely, you know, we, we spoke about it heavily in October was Mental Health, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just encourage any athlete, whether you're an athlete getting hit physically or just a person, anyone, to it's okay to go to therapy and just start even young. I told you guys last week, one of my best friends, he has his daughter in therapy <coughs> now and she's like... I want to say like nine years old because he wants her comfortable with going to therapy. Yeah. So it's something that we at the show just encourage completely. So. Yeah. Yeah, we just haven't. I, I don't think in our community we we haven't been. Uh, that hasn't been something that has been openly accepted. No. You know what I mean? It's almost yeah. like you look down upon. And it's still who, not. Who it's, go to it's, therapy? It's, it's, like, it's still yeah. not accepted. Sometimes you just need to talk to somebody right. that you yeah. don't know. Our, our therapy Unbiased. is the big homie on the block. Yeah, like you know? talking to that's Big Daryl. Like, yeah, you know <laughs> that's our therapy. You know, that, so like that's a great point because Coach D said that. Coach yeah. D said with a lot of. I know the, Coach D. She right. uh, she we worked together in the L Cool J camp. You know what I'm saying? This past summer and stuff, she's pretty dope. You know what I mean? And she's all about that right. mental yeah. health thing. She actually has uh, something coming up this month. I'm going to uh, post the flyers on Instagram. She has a, uh, another mental health awareness uh, mm -hmm. training that she's going to be doing later this month. So I'll, put, I'll give you guys all of the, uh, the info on that. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, 
real talk, we as real as you thought Real 